Hi, I'm Chris Fry of MDTS Training, and I'm here at the Greenfield Rod and Gun Club with my friend Fred. And we're going to do some, uh, some AR-15 shooting now. Uh, before we start shooting and uh, nailing the steel down range, we want to talk a little bit about some fundamentals of marksmanship with this, this platform. Uh, we've got six critical elements that we want to try to address and, uh, and, and know about before we start shooting so that we can make sure that every round goes where we want it to go. The first element is when Fred gets down here into whatever position, whether he's standing, whether he's in some type of kneeling position, or uh, in the more standard um, prone shooting position that he's in now. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this position. I'm going to focus more on what Fred's doing with the gun. The first thing that he wants to do is he wants to assume or get his natural point of aim. And his natural point of aim is where his body is most comfortable. So he gets his body comfortable first, then he moves the gun onto target, not the other way around. If he tries to put the gun on target and then just gets into any position and his body's uncomfortable, his body's stressed out in some way and, and tense, then that will affect how he manages the trigger and controls the rifle, which will have effect down range because it will cause muzzle deviation. So the way that he figures out his natural point of aim is he gets into his position, he gets his sights aligned on target, gets his sight picture, which we're going to go over next, and then he closes his eyes. He closes his eyes for two seconds, three seconds, and then opens his eyes again. If his sights moved, then his body's not in its natural position. So he might have to adjust his body. So go ahead and do that for me, Fred. Get your sight picture and, and sights lined up on that piece of steel. Close them. Hold them closed for a couple seconds, then reopen them and tell me if your sights moved. Slightly to the left. Slight to the left. So you want to move your body, maybe your feet, a little bit to where the next time you do that test, the sights don't move at all. You want to find your natural point of aim where his body's most comfortable to shoot. Good? Got it. All right, so now he's got his natural point of aim. The next element that we want to look at when it comes to fundamentals is his sight alignment. Now with the AR-15 platform, he's got a front sight post and a rear ghost ring. And he's got two different apertures on that rear ghost ring. He's got a, a 50 yards and in aperture, which is a bigger aperture. And then for distance work or for precision work, he has a smaller aperture. And for this, the purposes of today, he's about 60 yards out on the steel. He's going to use that small aperture. He's just, he could probably get away with using the big one, but we're going to have him use that small aperture, kind of like if he was going to zero his rifle. So using that small aperture, which is a circle, he's going to take that front sight post, and he's going to place that front sight post. He's going to, he's with his, his dominant eye, he's going to look through that circle in the back, that rear aperture, and he's going to place his front sight post in the middle of that rear aperture. And he's going to focus very intently with his dominant eye on the front top, the top of that front sight post. When he focuses intently on the front of that top post, that rear aperture will tend to blur out or almost disappear for some people. And that's why sometimes those are referred to as ghost rings. So that's his sight alignment. He's aligning that front sight post perfectly in the center of that rear aperture. The next element, the third element, is sight picture. He's got his sight alignment. He's got that front sight post lined up perfectly in the center of that rear aperture. And now he's going to take that alignment and he's going to place it over the target that he wants to engage. So for the purposes of this drill, we've got a piece of steel down range and he's going to align those sights and then he's going to superimpose them over his target. And that's what we call our sight picture. So he's got his natural point of aim. He's got good sight alignment. He's got good sight picture. And now the next element that he wants to start thinking about is his breath control, or what we call respiratory pause. When we're shooting at distance or we want to make a precision shot, we want to make sure that we're not taking a breath while we're trying to press the trigger. So he wants to shoot on what we call respiratory pause. So Fred's going to take a deep breath in and he's going to exhale. So right at the end of his exhale, his body is nice and relaxed. And we've got up anywhere from a four to six to eight, depending upon your fitness level and your age, pause where your body can go without oxygen. It's where your body's completely relaxed. Bef after that point, you have to breathe in again. And again, we don't want to shoot while we're breathing. We want to shoot for a precision shot on that respiratory pause. 
So once he understands where his respiratory pause is, the next element is one of the most critical to any fundamental marksmanship, and that's proper trigger management. He has to know what to do with that trigger and how to manipulate that trigger properly. So what Fred's gonna do first of all is, is how he works that trigger or manages it, and he's going to press the trigger. We don't squeeze the trigger because when we think of the word squeeze, most people will associate that with squeezing their entire hand. And when I want to manage the trigger at distance or to make a precision shot, I don't want to squeeze with all my fingers. I only want to work my trigger finger. So we think about pressing the trigger with one finger. And that's the word that we say over and over in our head. Front sight, press. So he gets his front sight lined up and he's going to use just the fingerprint of his trigger to press off that round. He's going to very smoothly press that trigger to the rear and he's going to hold it to the rear. He's going to hold it there while the gun cycles, ejects that spent casing, and reloads uh, a new sh uh, round into the, into the chamber. So now that he's got a new round in the chamber, he's held that trigger to the rear the entire time to set up his next shot. Once he's held that to the rear and the gun's done going through its cycle of operation, now he very slowly lets the trigger out to what we call trigger reset or sear reset and that's only as far as the trigger needs to go out to reset on the hammer the sear resetting on the hammer now he starts his whole cycle over again to follow up and shoot maybe two or three four more rounds but by doing following that sear reset that trigger reset he doesn't have to take his finger off the trigger and cause all this motion every time he shoots because the more motion that he do goes with his trigger finger the more he works that trigger finger in and out of the trigger guard the more chances that that'll translate to moving his muzzle a little bit causing muzzle deviation which at 60 yards could mean he me completely misses the target so proper trigger management is our fifth element our sixth and final element of good fundamental marksmanship is follow through. And follow through is very, very important, especially if we perceive the chances that we need to take a follow up shot. So he gets his sights lined up, he gets his natural point of aim, he gets his sight alignment, his sight picture, he gets his respiratory pause, he presses off that round and uses good trigger management. And he holds the trigger back and he keeps on looking through his sights trying to acquire a second sight picture. Now whether he has to fire a second shot or not is irrelevant. He always wants to get a second sight picture. That's good follow through. If he shoots one round and then looks up over his sights to check and see where his, tar his round impacted, then if he has to shoot a second round or a third or fourth round, he's just had to go through that whole process all over again. So it's better for him to follow, good, good follow through, get ready to fire a second, third, or fourth shot, and keep looking through his aperture and his front sight, good sight picture, and then if he has to shoot, he's already prepped to do so. If he doesn't have to shoot, he relaxes, finger off the trigger, safety on, and conducts whatever after action that he wants to do. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna have Fred load up, get ready, and then he's gonna fire a couple shots downrange on the steel following those six principles of fundamental marksmanship, and you guys get to see how he does. Okay, now we're gonna look at that trigger reset in a little bit more detail. And I want you to listen up to hear when that trigger's reset. So Fred, go ahead, press off one round, hold the trigger to the rear until I tell you to let it out. Go. Okay, now Fred's holding the trigger to the rear. He's getting his sight picture for his next shot. And very slowly, he lets out the trigger. Did you hear that click? That's the sear resetting on the hammer. So now he's prepped to do his next shot. Go ahead, Fred. And he goes through the whole sequence again. Every shot he fires, natural point of aim, sight alignment, sight picture, respiratory pause, proper trigger management, and good follow through. So now you know the fundamentals of how to shoot your AR-15. Fred and I are gonna do some more shooting here on this piece of steel. And you guys go out to the range and do some shooting too. If you need to find a range in your local area, check out NSSF's website, wheretoshoot.org.